Except you absolutely haven't heard the name before, a subwoofer is a sound device almost everyone wants to have in their music collection. Like the saying, you want a better sound system? Get a subwoofer, or so it goes. Let's go over it again. What is a subwoofer? It's a type of loudspeaker that produces deep sounds. Also called low frequency sounds. They are designed to work with loudspeakers in other to transmit complete sound. That is, both the high and low pitches. Woofers produce low frequency sounds like those within 40 and 80 Hz. But a sub produces much lower sounds 20 Hz. When Ken Kreisel from M&K Mill Operator and Kreisel Sound made the first sub in 1973. It was for a Chronicle Studio. He built it into a three-speaker structure. And it was used to blend the Pretzel Rationale collection of Steely Dan. Kreisel has been leading the revolution. Subs come in two varieties. They are passive and active subwoofers. The difference between them lies in their ability to power themselves or not. Both have their high and low points. Even though active subwoofers are easier to deal with, they don't necessarily produce better bass. The ability to give out clean, deep bass depends on the accuracy of the sub. You just have to be sure that your sub is set correctly. In all cases, you need to run your subwoofer into a receiver for it to produce sound. The process of connecting your sub depends on the type that you are using. Active subwoofers. You can also call them powered subwoofers. This is like bringing a sub and an amplifier into one cabinet so that they function together. It can function as a speaker by itself, without being attached to another amplifying device. What this means is that you don't have to run a lot of wires to link it with your surround sound preamp. Or with the receiver in your home theater. You can't limit an active sub to the performance of the receiver they are linking to. They also do not make power demands from a connecting receiver. Which means that other connecting speakers, like tweezers, can get enough power. Our focus is on the passive subwoofer. Why should you consider a sub that cannot power itself when it's easier to set an active sub? Passive subwoofers. A passive subwoofer needs an external amp before it can function. All the power that it uses has to come from an external device. A passive sub is usually a box with holes where the drivers sit and a wire sticks out behind that can link with speaker wires. Many passive subwoofers are used in cars. It's possible to find a passive sub that has other components that help it to keep away the high frequency. This doesn't make it a powered sub. When you use a passive sub, the receiver that links with it should have enough power to carry its heavy bass needs and still deliver effectively. That's because subwoofers require a lot more power to function than any other speaker does. Low frequency sounds take a lot of electrical energy. The deeper the bass, the more power the sub needs. Before you can set up a passive sub, you should be able to tell the range of its frequency and how much power it needs. That way, you'll be able to know the right amplifier to connect it with. The good thing is that if your efforts produce the right result, you may just have a better system than a powered sub. Your frequency calibration and power control will be a lot more customized to your needs. One way to differentiate a powered sub from a passive sub is by their connection port. While a passive sub comes with just the speaker connection jack. A powered sub will have subwoofer line, also called high level, input. So, to connect a passive sub to a receiver, you need speaker cables. You have to connect the sub as if it is a regular speaker. The external amplifier that connects with your sub should have a line input jack. In this case, when connecting, you have to run your wires from the home theater's subwoofer output, it may be an AV preamp, into the amplifier's line input. It's the speaker output of your external amplifier that you run to a passive sub speaker terminal. The major place you will find a passive subwoofer used for home theater installation is when the design is to fix the sub on the wall. There are situations when a home theater system has its own passive sub. A passive subwoofer will function better if it is placed in a room that doesn't have a lot of space. 
That way, it won't put a lot of demand on the amplifier that is powering it. You're likely to find one that is built for a specific speaker. Running a sub and its speaker together will ensure that you have better sound. What are the pros and cons of a passive subwoofer? A passive subwoofer has its advantages and concerns. Knowing them will help you make good choices with your subwoofer. Pros of a passive subwoofer. With an amplifier that has many channels on it, you can power more than one passive sub in your home theater. This lessens the cost of getting more than one amp for your subs. The cost of a passive sub is easier to handle. It's also easy to build one if you want to. Because they come in large boxes, you tend to have a lot more options for positioning the driver and the connecting ports. Even if the sub comes with a specified amplifier, replacing it with another external amp is easy because the passive subwoofer can work with any amplifier. You don't need a direct power outlet to run a passive subwoofer. In fact, it's okay to run long wires into it so that it is very far from the amplifying device. This reduces the possibility of the sub catching fire. The wires you use for your sub are all easier to handle. If you're using long speaker wires, they cost far less than subwoofer cables. Also, you'll find it easier to hide flat wires than to hide cables. The way passive subs are built, they have a better ability to reach lower frequencies than powered subs. You can even find those that their speaker output has a passive high pass. Passive subs are the right choice for adding bass into small speakers. You can regulate the bass to fit the speakers. With a dedicated amplifier, you can even power the speakers conveniently. The other side, though, is that you have to make sure that your amp can supply enough power to the speakers and the sub to keep the bass up while sustaining itself. Of course, what determines enough power depends on the needs of the speakers and how big the room you are setting up is. Passive subs can reach down efficiently to the low ends of your sound. So, when they are connected to home theater, they produce very clear bass to enhance the sound playing out. Cons of a passive subwoofer. If your passive subwoofer comes with its dedicated external amp, then you probably may pay more to get the amp. You may even find that the amplifier costs more than the subwoofer does. If your passive sub's crossover and output are not adjusted well, you may have sonic issues. Even though your passive sub may give out better bass when you adjust it well, the process is more complex than it is for powered subs. There's the sub, there's the external amplifier, and there's the cable. You'll have to run a lot of cables to get your job done. Passive subwoofers don't come by themselves often. You'll get them as part of a home theater system. This makes the cost of getting one go up. You'll end up paying more to acquire the entire components. A little more on subwoofers. Some full-range speakers have a subwoofer built into them with an amplifier that powers them. The amplifier is usually dedicated to the sub so that the major amp does not have to bear the load of the sub. Such speakers need to be plugged into a wall outlet. As a reminder, having a subwoofer integrated into your musical system doesn't automatically translate to super sound. If the subwoofer isn't set up properly, designed effectively, or is not built for home theaters, it will only make a mess of your music system. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details. Visit our site zimsubwoofers.com for more subwoofer tips like this.